Hey guys, it's Misty again with My Paper Cuts. And today I'm coming on to share, uh, <laughs> last year I had started a Christmas series um, trying to use up some of my paper collections. I have a very large Christmas paper collection and so last year I decided to just start picking a pad or a collection at a time and just making a bunch of projects with it, trying to use stuff up. Um, and I did share quite a few projects last year, but I, apparently I didn't share what I did with this paper pad that you see in front of you. And I did use up the whole thing. I think I had set aside to do the video and then I never did the video. So I thought I would come on today and share this with you guys. Um, I was putting away all of my Halloween stuff and digging out all my Christmas stuff and came across this. So... Um, I thought I would start off and I plan on continuing the series this Christmas and just starting to use more. Obviously, with everybody at home, we have more time. Although I can't seem to find this extra time we're supposed to have. <laughs> it just seems to elude me. But anywho, um, you guys are here to see this um, the, the projects that I made. So I'll just go ahead and get on with those. So um, I know there was something else that I made with this, but I must have given it away because I don't I don't have it with the the bin that this was in. So this is the paper collection that um, I used for this set of projects. It's called Snow Day. It's obviously by Crate Paper. I picked this up in 11, uh, November of 2015 at Tuesday morning. So I've had this in my stash for quite a while. And the interesting thing is, is when I was working there, this paper came in again. And that was just last year. So apparently they're still getting this one in. And I know I've seen it when I've been out and about it Tuesday morning that they've still had it. I think it was on clearance at one point. So I'm not sure if it'll come back. But it is a very fun pad because it has these purples and the turquoise and the orange and, you know, this hot pink. It's not traditional by any means other than the imagery. And the imagery, even though it's cutesy to me, it still has kind of a little bit of a vintage feel to it. So... I actually enjoyed working with this. So I don't remember the order I made the projects in, but I think I'll just share from smallest to largest for what I have. So the first thing I'm going to share is a couple of tags. So I did these tags and um, this is a lawn fawn image and it says all I want for Christmas is you and a unicorn. And these tags do open up to say to and from. And um, I made 24 of each of these, and I believe this tag die is from MFT. Um, it's a great tag die because they, they do open up. Um, they have the little reinforcers, they have the tops to, if you want to do a different color, they have this kind of a reinforcer in there. So it's a really fun set. And then this is also a Lawn Fawn image. I have a couple of those little mini sets. But this one, I put seasons and then I put greetings on the bottom and then there's the to and from. And like I said, I made 24 of each of these and I probably did these with just the scraps that I had left over and just made as many as I could. So I made those and here is the whole box of them. Just to show you guys, I did make that many. <laughs> and then I also have this set of shaped cards that I did. So this, this little hedgy here is from Penny Black. And then this is a die, and I honestly don't remember which die that is, but, um, and then this little Merry Christmas is one of the Memento stamps from Tuesday morning. And I just, um, die cut that out and I popped it up on some foam. And then the hedgie is on watercolor paper and he's watercolored and on his, on the ball and the, the fur of his hat, there is some... Um, oh, it's frosted lace. That's frosted lace stickles. It doesn't have as much shine. I just wanted it to have the texture. And I just rough cut a little seam here, at the, or a little snow banky type thing here at the bottom. And then there's glossy accents on the garland here on the tree. And that star is a wooden star. And then the background, I'm not sure if I'll pick it up, but the background is a snowfall background stamp that I have, and it's embossed in a white sparkly, um, let me see if I hit it with my phone if you guys can see. Uh, still, you can't really pick it up, so sorry, but I promise that that is glittery embossing powder on the back. And then it's just a stand, a regular, I have a scalloped oval die set, and I just cut it, and then I just scored here so it could be a shaped card. 
So I think I made eight of these. I have eight left. I may have made more, but I do have eight of them. So I got quite a few of those cards done, and that was a fun one. And then the, let's see, the next thing I'm going to share is a banner, which nobody will be surprised that I made a banner. So I made a banner that says Frosty. And let me see, I doubt that I'll get the whole thing in frame here at once, but you guys get the idea. So um, basically for this, um, the it's on one of my wooden, it's on a wooden um, banner base that I like to use. And I always put just a simple cardstock on the back. And then here is one of the pattern papers. And then on my rosettes, you can kind of see it. Um, I actually went around all of the edges, including the scallops with stickles. So there's some sparkle there. And then there's a doily and then a snowflake, um, which I cut out with my scan and cut. And then the letters I also cut out with my scan and cut. And then they're on several layers, so they're nice and sturdy. And I just put some glue on the bottom here just to make it look like snow. And that is, and there's a little bit of a blue tinge behind it with a Copic. And then I put over the top of that um, the Rock Candy Clear Glitter from Tim Holtz so that the blue would come out a little bit. And I stamped some really small snowflakes on the back with just a beige. And then that, I'm pretty sure that is, um, is mercury glass stickles that I put in the center of those. And then every other banner has, or every other piece panel has, um, this pretty golden burlapy looking, uh, wired ribbon and a bow and then some jingle bells and the jingle bell colors alternate just for more interest. And then the, um, color of the. Uh, rosettes also changes. So the only difference with um, the other panels is this top, which I've ruffled up some tulle and put a um, pom pom in the center. And then these are kind of those, uh, those, um, they're rough. They're kind of like, I don't know, I always want to say they're rock candy, but they're, um, they're gems from Hobby Lobby. But then the panels all look, you know, they just alternate. So here on the O, we have the green bells and then the S and the T with the gold bells and the Y. So that is the banner I created with this collection. So let me get that out of the way here. And then the last thing I have to share that I made is actually a mini album. It's really thick. It's got a, let's see here. What is that about a, four inch spine and on the cover I just free handed a snowbank and again it's got foam behind it and then the second layer this is just one of the pattern papers from the collection and the rest of the stuff that I used I pretty much just used the brown from this I don't remember if I used that snowman maybe inside but these are a bunch of wooden snowflakes and then some vellum and glitter snowflake stickers that I glued on and then on the uh, spine here. There is a uh, chipboard heart that has an inner heart and I co covered those with some of the pattern paper and then this little uh, brad here from Tim Holtz. I can hang some tassels or something on there. Um, I don't think I decided what I wanted to do and then the back had my this was actually my least favorite paper but I like it on the back of this um, album. So the album is just closed with some ribbon and this is just sheer ribbon with polka dots and then the inside and forgive me if I stumble a little bit because it's been a year since I looked at this album but so in the inner cover and I believe yes on the back cover there is a waterfall um, I really like to do waterfalls in my albums it's a really easy way and an interactive way to add lots and lots of photos so there's that waterfall and then again on the back cover there's one that is the same and then on this first page here, there's a flap. There's two four by four photos. And then this is probably a booklet. Yes, for more four by four photos in that pocket. And each page is a pocket and there's a booklet inside each one again for four by four photos. And then, whoops. 
<clears throat> here we have um, a couple of flips for three by four photos and then a full size four by six. And then on this side, we have a double belly band and another four by four photo booklet. And then another booklet here inside the pocket. And then on this page, this flips out and these two flip out. So this is a really interactive album. This one has a stacked pocket with a little booklet, three by four photos, and another little booklet with that adorable chubby penguin and some four by four photos. And then another booklet inside the pocket of that page with more four by four photos. So there's a lot of room for pictures in this one. This is one of the cut aparts and here's a flap and here's another booklet. I like to use the cut aparts on the booklets. Um, that way you can frame them and make them look really nice. And then over here, this flips up to a three by four photo. This is another flap here with a pocket and it's got three by three photos. And when it flips down, then you have a four by six and another three by four photo. And I don't think that's a, no, that's not a belly band. Okay. And then in here, there's another booklet. You guys are probably getting tired of seeing those. <laughs> and then here's another flip out. And this is just a, you know, four by four and a three by four photo. And then here's a couple more flaps. Two more three by fours and a four by four. And another pocket with a cute gingerbread, or pocket booklet with a gingerbread man. And then here, oh, I remember this page. So this flips up. Oh, it's the last page I'm thinking of. And here's another booklet that goes inside that pocket. And then over here, there's a big flap with a side pocket, another booklet, and then another booklet inside the page. And then this is the one I was thinking of. So this opens out, another cut apart and opens out. And then this whole thing flips up. So there's more photos there and that's obviously magnetized. And then there's that other waterfall. So that is my busting through my Christmas stash. I don't remember what episode this would be, but it definitely wanted to come on and share again some projects that I did make last year. And um, I don't know, hopefully inspire you guys to dig into your stash, find your really old paper pads and give them a whirl. So I am... Um, off to look at what else I have in my Christmas stash that I can start making with. And I hope you all have an enjoyable rest of your weekend. I know it's almost over, but um, we're already in November. So let the Christmas crafting shenanigans begin. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.